Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic electrochemistry. So our subtopic for today is still on standard electrode potentials and in this case we are doing EMF which is the electromotive force. So previously we said that standard electrode potentials help in uh, identifying, oxidizing and reducing agents in reactions. So today we are going to see how standard electrode potentials help us to calculate the electromotive force. So the electromot the E values of a redox reaction is usually calculated or the E cell by subtracting the electrode potential of the reducing agent from the electrode potential of the oxidizing agent. Basically, it's the same as E reduction, E oxidation. I like putting it as E redox. So reduction minus oxidation or E-oxidizing agent minus E-reducing agent. This is by use of formula. So you can use the formula to do your calculation or you can, you can add the sum of the electrode potentials of the two cells after reversing the half cell equation of the cell with more negative electrode potentials. I will show you both methods so that you can see you can be able to use ether. So let's take, for example, this half cell. We have copper and zinc. So if you were to calculate the EMF of a, a, a cell that is formed by combining these two half cells. So the first method is going to be the formula method. So we say that it's going to be the E cell is equals to E reduction minus E oxidation. So E reduction, you take the value, the values or or the ones that are undergoing um, reduction or the oxidizing agent, and then the ones that are undergoing oxidation or the reducing agent. So reduction, it means that they are, under, they are gaining electrons while oxidation, they are losing electrons. So oxidizing agents will have positive value. In this case, copper is the one that has a tendency of gaining electrons because it has a positive uh, electrode. So it's going to be positive 0 0.34 while zinc is the reducing agent or she has the highest tendency of losing electron so 0 0.76 so we take them distinctively and then subtract which will give us positive uh, 1.1 volts or you can just leave as it is so the second method we said is uh, reversing the equation of the one that is undergoing um, oxidation or the reducing agent so we are going to write the equations once more so that i can be able to show you what i mean so the copper ions uh, will gain two electrons to form copper solid and the electrode potential is positive 0 0.34 so for zinc zinc when you look at this reaction from the equation it tells you that zinc ions are gaining two electrons to form zinc solid but we said zinc has the highest tendency to lose electron so when you write the correct equation it means you are going to swap this equation which is going to be zinc solid reacting to form the zinc ions plus two electrons that are lost the moment we swap the equation we also swap the standard electrode potential it's no longer becomes negative it becomes positive 0 0.76 when you add these two you get 1.1 positive volts so in both cases you see you get the same values next we look at this question so the standard electrode potentials for some half cells are given the following uh calculate the emf of the cell as shown below so this is the cell that we are calculating the EMF of. So let's look at the value of silver silver ions, which is going to be positive 8, 0 0.80. Then barium is negative 2.90. So 
Between these two, we have to determine the one that is undergoing oxidation and the one that is undergoing reduction. If you look at the negative values of barium, it tells you that barium has a higher tendency of losing electron. So this is the one that is undergoing oxidation process. While the silver cell, this is where the reduction occurs. So if you were to use the first method, that it would be E cell is equals to E reduction minus E oxidation. So this would be uh, e reduction is positive 0 0.80 minus negative 2.90, which gives us positive uh, 3.70. That is the E cell. We were to use the second um, formula. First thing we said is to write the half cell equation. So we will start with the one that is undergoing reduction. That is the one that is gaining because you're not going to change the equation for this. So it's silver ions gaining an electron to form silver solid has an electrode potential of 0 0.80. And then now, barium is one that is undergoing uh, oxidation, meaning it's the one that is going to lose electron. So if you look at this equation, it doesn't go in line with how the reaction is supposed to occur. This reaction tells us that barium reacts with against two electrons to form barium solid. So it means you have to reverse the equation to the way it's supposed to be. So barium solid reacts by losing electrons to form barium ions and loses two electrons so our sign changes from negative to positive 2.90 after that you add the electrode potentials and you get positive 3.70 volts so let's do another question the standard electrode potentials for certain half cell reactions are shown below so we have w x y and z right the cell equation for the cell formed by connecting y and x cells and then calculate the emf of the cell above so we'll start with the half equations so w w has electrode potential of negative 0 0.76 x has electrode potential of negative 0 0.23 volts so if you are to compare these two you have to look at the one that is most negative and the one that is most negative is the one that has a higher tendency of losing which is w so it means the x gains automatically so w undergoes loss so we need to write the half cell equation for that and we write it in the correct manner so w solid reacts by losing two electrons to form W ions. And then X gains those electrons automatically. So X ions gains those two electrons to form X solid. So if you were to write the overall equation, we just combine without electrons. So W solid plus X two ions to form W two ions plus X solid. I just combined these two. So I've done the first part of the equation. Number two is supposed to calculate the cell no, uh, EMF of the cell. So E cell is equals to E reduction minus E oxidation. E reduction is one that is having a tendency of gaining, which is our X, which has a value of negative 0 0.23 volts. And then E oxidation has a higher tendency of losing, which is zero negative 0 0.76 volts. So this is negative 0 0.23 plus 0 0.76 because minus and minus becomes plus. This gives us positive 0 0.53. So at the E cell, which can also be calculated using now these two equations. So W solid forms w ions plus two electrons we have changed this equation so we will change our standard electrode potential to be positive 0 0.76 volts and then the other one is x 
uh, two plus plus two electrons and aqueous to form X solid. So this remains at negative 0 0.23, which will give us, so it is 0 0.76 minus 0 0.23, which gives us positive 0 0.53 volts. So either way, you get the same answer. So if you were to write the cell notation now, uh, for this uh, cell that is made from these two half cells, it would be W solid, then space boundary, W to ions aqueous, cell, uh, salt bridge, then X ions aqueous, then face boundary, X solid, and then you'd put the E cell now, which is positive 0 0.53 votes so if you have you can be able to get the e cell always put it in the cell notation or in the final equation to be on the safe side especially when we are doing your final exams so that's it that brings us to the end i hope you've been able to see how to calculate the emf of a cell using two different methods uh, using the formula and also using the reverse equations. Either way, you still get the same equation. This is a very common uh, equation. Previously, we, we discussed on how to identify oxidizing agents and reducing agents. This probably forms part of the question as well. It's common for these questions to follow each other. So the next uh, lesson, we are going to be looking at how the standard electrode potentials help us to determine if a reaction occurs or doesn't occur. So see you in the next lesson.